that match against Peter Ebden, which was expected to be a bit of a psychological thriller in many respects, yeah, John. Well, I mean, Peter's an exceptional player anyway, but also he can affect the rhythm of your game. I mean, if he, set, he decides to take a little bit of time, that can upset you as a player, but there was none of it happening there. And the reason we do look at Ronnie and we look at his, the way his temperament is is because it's the only thing you can look at that might not be 100% all the time. Because hitting the ball and making breaks, there's no one better. Okay, so far, so good. It's the Rocket in control. It was interesting to hear that from Steve and John, and uh, it's amazing how they look at Ronnie on and off the table to see what kind of mood he's in. You can see now he's taking interest in every shot he plays, and he's so disappointed there, Ken, wasn't he, to have left a pot on? Yeah, just overhit the cue ball, but this is not going in, and this is poor for Mark Williams. He's really struggling at the moment. He started off pretty well, but there's a couple of shots, basically Thank half you. chances that he's had, and frame two and three that you'd expect them to get and that's another one to the middle pocket and at the moment he's struggling that was very jabby though ken wasn't it there was there was no fluency what? in the stroke there he seemed to kind of just hit at it rather it was just a nervy shot that one so ronnie won't be pleased with that he's trying to stay on the blue Heart may have skipped the beat as that a moment, please, pink please. wiped its feet before it dropped in. It was only the pace, only harder, and that pink would have stayed over the hole. Thank you. Seven. Now, has he got an angle on this red? Get top side of the blue. Eight. <laughs> Saw him just kick his foot in there. there. Just wanted to miss the blue because it would have been perfect to get into the reds. It's a lot tougher from the brown off two cushions. And he won't get the desired pace from the cue ball as it goes into them. It's going to go in as a dead white. But luckily for him, and I, I mean, that is sort of, to be honest, OK, he deserves probably to be on one because the kiss off the brown was a very, very tough shot. But you can see when the white comes into the pack off two cushions, it loses its top spin. And it just managed to push that one run out. <clears throat> Unfortunately for Ronnie, the pink has come down and blocked the path of the black into this bottom right hand corner pocket. I'm trying to get Thank on the you. pink here. Has he overhit it? Looks to be okay, just about. <laughs> And I think the red at the bottom of the pack, will really, just above the black, there you see it, that does go. So I'm trying to get on that red, I'm trying, if he can, stay low on this red. And he's just done that perfectly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Even the referee is getting excited. Thank you. <laughs> he can't keep up with the pace of Roddy O'Sullivan in this flow. Red's going to be spread here in playing this shot. 20. No side. I thought he'd play with a little bit of side there to get the white a little bit further up the table, but he's got second prize. Blue available into the corner. And if this goes in and the mood is in, this could be another frame over in the blink of an eye, as John Parrott says. Right. This time every spot covered, so the blue has to go near as the pink as possible, in a direct line. Well, something had obviously got moved, because didn't the pink go on the blue spot last time? Why? Oh, that's better. Now we're in a line now. It's from here, lovely thing. 26. Lovely little shot there, just screwing in between the two reds there. I'm going to pot in this red. The red just the left of this red will pot into this bottom right hand corner pocket. Four. 
Mark's looking a bit forlorn sitting in his chair, and of course Ronnie can get you like that sometimes. You end up kind of watching the player what, do what? things that you know you can do, but you're just wondering why it's not happening. I think sometimes if you play someone like Ronnie Ken, I don't know what you think, is, is it might be best not to watch him play. <laughs> I think all players like to watch Ronnie play, even if they are playing against him. He's one of those type of players, you just love watching him play. He makes the game look ridiculously easy at times. Okay. You can't time it any better than his timing is at the minute, that's for sure. 50. He's just absolutely stroking the ball. There are a couple of loose reds, but you may take the opportunity just to come down. Just play a little cannon, just on those couple of reds, just right off the pink spot. He's got two choices. He plays the slow pink and plays for one red, or he plays the blue into the two reds you suggested. Didn't hit the desired red, but still got a good result. 55. 56. <clears throat> And because he couldn't guarantee getting him perfectly on the pink there, he actually played for a bought colour. The fact that it's ended up on the pink is a bonus. 54. Oh, that actually went off. Oh, we saw I had the pleasure of uh, he, Ronnie suggesting it rolled to the right, and it did, because Ryan Day played like one of those shots earlier on today. And it definitely pulled to the right-hand jaw. We can actually see this here. It was always hitting the, the jaw there, but then it, all of the last foot... It just went another inch. Now, somehow, Mark, if you can just grit your teeth and clear up from here, this would hurt O'Sullivan because if he comes out One. two each from this little mini session, he'll think he's won the session. Ronnie, just having a look at the pink as it rolled towards that right hand side cushion. That was an excellent control shot for Mark Williams there. Always difficult to control a ball when it's in the jaws of the pocket. Eight. Mark would love to get the blue out of the way here just to open that red and black up. The blue obviously will go to its own spot. He won't be able to get it at this time, but certainly in the next couple of shots he'd like to get the blue back onto its own spot. Twelve. play at this time, just roll on off the cushion. Finish on the blue straightish so you can get onto the red. Just look checking the scoreboard. There's plenty of points available so it doesn't have to worry about what colour it takes off the reds. Nine. Oh that's flew off the cushion. All of a sudden now the blue's not straightforward to get onto the next red unless he screws into the red and pushes the red over the corner. Just watch this white. Went on at two mile an hour, came off at four. Amazing. Oh, well played. Good shot, that. Still able to hold for the red. And now he's just got to be careful. 24. And this would be a steal of all steals. 25. Now he's not 3-1 behind here, Ken. It would be amazing if he came out to each. Yeah, as you said, he feel like he would have won this fourth session. He's got a bit to do. And he's going to need that black as well. Twenty-five points behind. 
any colour. And he's going to need all six remaining pots colours two. after he pots this blue. Looks about perfect. Well, for all the world, when Mike Williams was sitting in his chair. Top piece seven. Little did he realise he was going to get another chance in this frame. 39. Yeah, Ronnie hasn't played a bad shot, has he, really? It's only the table that uh, cost him there. In the last three frames, I can't think of one bad shot he's played. It just shows you the standard you've got to 42. be at. Hadn't played a bad shot, and it's still two each. Forty-six. Because the black's off its spot, it's not a natural shot, so he doesn't want to be leaving an angle on the last black. He'd like to drop right in behind it so it's dead straight. <laughs> now, what kind of angle does he have? A uh, pretty good one. Not perfect, just slightly top side. Well played, Mark Williams had been kept off the table for two and a half frames, and then the one chance he had had to clear, and he did that with a magnificent 64 to level somehow up to all. Well, I guess there's always a danger when you have uh, two prize fighters out there like these two that it's not going to live up to expectations, anything but, John. That was a fantastic opening session they've played there. And what Williams has done there is what Williams is brilliant at. Bergling frames, he never looks like winning. And uh, absolutely wonderful clearance. Uh, he looked at the start of that frame like he'd done the hit a red over the pocket just to leave him in, so he didn't look like he was totally settled. But that clearance had done him the world of good. When you think about uh, Williams' record against Ronnie, I don't know whether it galvanises or puts one off when you go into uh, a match against an opponent that you haven't beaten for ten years, and you know he has done for your chances at the World Championship. In three of the last six years, Ronnie's had the upper hand. It's quite a remarkable record, Steve. Yes, and it does depend on the character of the person, how they deal with it. Uh, I don't think real, really Mark Williams is the type of person that really would dwell on anything like that. What we do know about Mark Williams, when he was in his pomp a number of years back, um, he was brilliant under pressure, potting lots and lots of really tough balls when he needed to. Uh, when he's in that type of form, he's a very, very dangerous animal indeed, as is Ronnie O'Sullivan, one of the best pressure players in the game. And uh, clearing, clearances uh, may make the difference in this, and, and they're both very capable of uh, stealing frames off the other. OK, well, they've got a 15 or so minute interval, uh, during which time we'll reflect on the, the exploits of a certain Stephen Hendry, who for the second Saturday in a row has been the focal point of attention.